What's up guys, welcome to another episode. Today, I had two things specifically that I wanted to get done. One of them's mechanical, the other one's electrical. So let me just get right into it. All right, so if you guys are still wondering what I'm gonna work on, we're gonna add a hydro e-brake and we're also gonna do a Celica Supra, a 7MGE or a 5MGE AFM conversion. For those of you that don't know, the 5MGE actually ran a similar AFM. The only difference between the two is basically how the circuit boards measure the voltage and send the signal out. And if you're lucky and can find an 82 5MGE, the AFM is literally a direct swap for the 22RE one, so you don't even have to open it up and do any of this. Unfortunately for me though, mine is from an 83, so I have to open it up, swap everything internally over from the 22RE one, and see if it runs. So luckily for me, I had a spare AFM from the Celica that I'm actually running on the pickup truck. So this is the original one to my truck, which means I'm gonna be taking the one that I currently have on my truck off, modify that one over to the 5MGE housing. So then that way I'll still keep the original Toyota one just in case things go south. And I know that it works fine. The only reason I have the Celica one on there is when I was swapping over the air box, I didn't take it off. So you could do this with just a simple soldering iron or you can invest in a rework station, which I really do recommend because it makes electronic jobs just super easy, especially having full control of everything. I'm gonna be using this Yihua 862BD Plus. I've had this for about a year and a half now and I actually really like it. It's similar to the one that I use at work, which is like way more expensive and it's from like a top tier brand. And I just love the fact that it comes with an attached heat gun. But first I'm gonna get to work on that hydro e-brake install because I know that's gonna be the more painstaking one since I have to crawl under the car and I'm working with Hardline. So first things first, I have to take the center console cup holder thing out of my truck. I have to figure out exactly where I wanna mount the e-brake and then I have to cut out some steel plate and weld it on just so in that way I have something super sturdy to mount on that's not just the thickness of the sheet metal. So yeah, time for me to get to work. So I got way ahead of myself and I already installed the base plate for the e-brake. So I got a piece of 3 16 and I basically just drilled it out and sandwiched it. So it's basically sandwiched in between the transmission tunnel and the e-brake bracket. I was originally gonna weld it in, but I don't know if I'm gonna keep this e-brake. It is an eBay special. I kind of just bought it just to see if I even like it. I don't know, maybe somewhere down the line, I'm gonna end up going with the Chase Bays one, but for right now, you can't beat eBay for 50 bucks, especially when it's just trial and error. So in fifth gear, I have absolutely no touching. It only touches in reverse, but I mean, the fuck am I gonna be doing? All right, so now that I have it installed, I have to route the new brake line and start bending it into what position I want it to. But I'm hungry, I'm gonna get myself some Burger King and then uh, we'll be back with some more. So before I finish that hydro install, I'm gonna mount my TV since my TV mount just came in. It's nothing crazy, it's just a 32 inch. I just wanted to be able to watch YouTube while I'm here. So let me get this done real quick and we'll get back with that hydro. All right, so I got the TV finally mounted and I mean, it's not the biggest thing, but now at least I have something that I could watch YouTube or even just play my Spotify on instead of just always using my sound bar. Anyways, let's get this hydro finished. All right, so for you guys out there with the Toyota Mini truck, you have two brake lines that are actually feeding the rear because we have a load sensing proportioning valve. So on your master cylinder, you're gonna have your front and your rear, but the front is also feeding the rear and I'll show you guys where. This one goes directly to the rear. This is the one that we want. So follow this one. Like I said earlier, here's the one that comes in, it feeds the front, and it also has a brake line that's going towards the rear. This one's the one coming off the master cylinder, it goes directly to the rear, and it all meets up at this little junction, and this is the load sensing proportioning valve. I know that a lot of the rock crawling guys do the LSPV delete, but in all honesty, it completely ruins your brake bias. If most of your driving is on the road and you daily it a lot, I honestly don't recommend deleting it. Right now my workbench is currently a mess, but this is what you're gonna need. 3 16 brake line, 3 16 fittings, and also a 3 16 union. So I'm basically just gonna disconnect that fitting that's fed by the master cylinder right next to the passenger side wheel well. And I'm gonna run a brand new line all the way into the hydro, then from the hydro out, and I'm gonna splice in to the original existing line that's there. Hopefully after we bleed the system, everything works like intended. So let me get started on this before it gets fucking hotter, man. Uh... What's up guys? So yesterday I couldn't finish getting my hydro plumbed up because I thought it was cross-threaded. So I was having issues with the regular 3 8 fitting and it felt like it just wasn't grabbing any threads. So I drill and tapped it for a 7 16 and now the brake line won't seal. I don't know if it's the flare type of the fitting or if it's the fact that it's just not long enough to actually create a seal. So I ordered a new Willwood piece since this eBay one seems to just have so many problems. So according to Amazon, my package is supposed to be here today, sometime in the next hour or so, but I live out in the country so sometimes it takes 
the whole entire day. Sometimes they don't even deliver it on time. So in the meantime, I'm gonna work on the mass airflow housing swap, but first I gotta clean off my table. It is a mess. Let me clean it up real quick and we'll get started on that one too. So here we have the two mass airflow sensors. This one's the original 22RE one. This one is off of a 5M or 7MGE. All right, so just differences in inlet. This one's a three inch. I think this one's a two and a half. This one also has a 64 by 64, or I think a 58 by 58 uh, square inlet for the vein. This one has a 68 by 54, I believe. And on the back side, they look almost similar in size, but again, this one's three inch. This one I think is two and a half. So it's nothing crazy. It's not like you're getting this crazy amount of performance. Plus these engines just do not breathe. But somewhere down the line, I am gonna throw a cam in this, so it's gonna be worth it. So let me get to the next part and show you guys the internals. All right, so here we have the 5MG housing. We're gonna remove these three spade connectors. Make sure you remember where they go. It's pretty easy due to one being longer than the other. Then we're gonna unsolder these three little pins and then these three little pins from the circuit board. Once we get that done, we can get the new circuit board onto here and solder it all up. So let's get started. So I got a bit ahead of myself and I went ahead and took the pin and took the connector pin out. So here we have the circuit board for the 22RE and this is the circuit board for the 5MGE. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this so in that way I don't accidentally reinstall this one. All right, so you're gonna have a little Allen head screw that's holding on the actual needle. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, take this out of place, set all the hardware together, man. Do not lose it. Then with whatever tool you're using, I'm using these little pliers, I'm gonna go ahead Grab the circuit board, take it out. And we're gonna put it in its new home inside of the 5MG housing. All right, so now we're gonna throw all the hardware back onto the circuit board. We're gonna re-solder it back in. Let me get this soldering done and see if we can throw it on the truck. All right, so I got it all soldered up. Here we have a completed 5MGE mass airflow with a 22RE circuit board. So here we have the old 22RE mass airflow housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing away and then uh, we can test out the new mass airflow. All right, so I got it running. Honestly, it seems like it's a bit rich. So it looks like the truck's running a little bit rich, but the mass airflow sensor works, which is great. So I'm gonna adjust the AFM a few teeth back just to make sure that it leans out a bit. And then I have to make a new intake pipe for it since the original one isn't gonna work now. But I'm happy that it's running and I'm happy that it actually works. Also, my new brake master cylinder came in, but it is not the same thread pitch as a little leverage arm that goes connected to the actual handle. So I'm gonna have to tap that out, but I might just do that tomorrow because it's getting late in the day and it's hot. I'm sweaty, my shirt is sweated through and I'm hungry, so let's finish this up tomorrow. Many months later. All right, so it's literally been like a week since I worked on my hydro and finally the correct fitting came in. As always, I got ahead of myself and I went ahead and installed it already. And for those of you that are gonna install a hydro, if you need that specific brake fitting, it's gonna be a 7 16th by 20. Make sure the fitting itself is set up for a double flare. I actually got mine off eBay off Brake Hoses Unlimited. Check these guys out. Go ahead and give a little. But yeah, I was able to get the fitting for like three bucks, $5 shipping. So yeah, now we got the hydro all plumbed up and honestly don't think it looks bad in its location. Right now I have it engaged. So I'll foot on the brake currently. Neutral, I'll let go of the brake. stopping baby so I got a few things that I got to tidy up on the e-brake there's a c-clip that's missing I got to tighten up a few of the bolts but besides that it's basically fully installed in the car so for the people that are wondering 
e-brake lines are Nicosil. They're the easiest ones that you could bend by hand without having to use like a specific radius bender. The thing that sucks about these is you can't go past like a 45, maybe 60 degree bend without them kinking. At that point, you need a brake line bender, but I honestly just used the PVC pipe and I was able to keep 90 degree bends and all that stuff pretty tight without it kinking at all. Do need to go to the auto parts store. Got to pick up two grommets just for where they're poking through in the cabin. The last thing I want is the brake line rubbing up against the cabin and starting a leak and then losing my rear brakes. So my takeaways from the hydro install are definitely invest in a nice brake flaring tool. I'm using like the cheapest one you can get from Harbor Freight. So around my third or fourth flare, the actual wings on the wing nut broke off. You always run into issues where they don't want to align correctly and you have to constantly adjust it. You get a lot of uneven flaring. And also my biggest tip for anyone doing a brake line, don't do a single flare. Do a double flare. It is not gonna seal properly if you only do a single flare on it. That's why that specific fitting that I was talking about for the input side of the master cylinder has to be a 7 16 by 20 double flare. Because if not, it's not going to seal properly up against the master cylinder ever. Uh, another issue I ran into while doing it is the LSPV, load sensing proportioning valve. Um, the bottom line is the feed from the front brakes and the top is the feed from the brake master to the rear. I'm not sure if somewhere down the line someone swapped them over on my truck or if that's how they originally come. But yeah, I basically did a brake fluid flush without thinking about it when I disconnected that line thinking it was the right one. So I used about 12 feet of brake line because I basically ran brand new fresh brake line from the feed in the passenger side front tire all the way to the hydro then from the hydro all the way to the rear end honestly using this brake flaring tool while being under a car does not work this little lip that you have here is supposed to be well it doesn't have to but you want to make sure that you have like a bench vise or a table vise that you could hold this onto so then that way you could do all your finagling on this definitely buy bendable brake line make sure you pre-measure and pre-flare your brake line before installing it Bend it as you're installing it. That's why I recommend getting the Nicosil line because it's so malleable and it's so easy to manipulate and you know put into weird positions that a regular steel brake line or hard line wouldn't let you. Make sure that the thread pitch on the plunger on the Willwood one is the exact same thread pitch as your little Chinese one because if not, you're gonna have to tap and drill like I did. If you don't tap and drill it, you're basically never gonna be able to fine tune adjust the little bracket that connects onto the hydro arm. Master cylinder itself is about 70 bucks, which I do recommend. Just go to JEGS, go to Summit, uh, go to like a reputable site because if you go on eBay, you might find one for like 10 bucks cheaper, but it more than likely is a knockoff Willwood piece. I've, I've ordered a few knockoff Willwood pieces before and they look eerily similar to the real one. Like extremely similar you'll notice in the box the box tells you everything just like with nikes and jordans and stuff the box tells you everything now for the afm swap i still have not installed it i actually need to order some aluminum pipe because for one it is not the correct size i thought it was two and a half and it's two and three quarter two i'm gonna have to figure out how exactly i'm gonna route it there's no space in the engine bay right now for this to sit where it originally sat. So I'm gonna have to look around my engine bay and see where exactly I wanna put it. It works, I drove up and down my neighborhood with it. I didn't really wanna go anywhere too far because I didn't have a filter on it. So I threw the stock AFM back on. But this time I threw a cool little eBay cone filter on it for the induction noises. And honestly, I wanted to do this AFM swap when I did the cam and everything else that I'm gonna do on this motor. There's no point and having more breathability if the motor doesn't want to breathe more. So I'm gonna hold off on the AFM for a little bit while I get my LC engineering parts. But yeah, basically the brake flaring tool to stay away from unless you're on a budget is this style. You know what I'm saying? It works, it really does work, but you have to be patient and you have to work at your bench instead of being to work on the actual car. They have more expensive brake flaring kits that let you actually flare while you're underneath the car or inside the cabin, but but I don't know if anyone's trying to shell out 80 plus dollars just to flare three or four different lines and then probably never use it for another few years. Man, the words of Taylor Ray, I'm fucking jibber jabbering. Let me go ahead and clean up my workspace, clean up the garage a little bit, see if we can get some ripperoonies on the mini truck. Uh, give me a minute.
Alright guys, so I was able to go to Mexico, got a little tiny bit of footage to see if that e-brake worked. And to be honest, it feels fantastic. So I live nearby an abandoned airport. I'm sure most of you in Central California know which one I'm talking about. So I'm going to see if maybe it'll be okay if I can go over there for maybe an hour or two so I can do a full shakedown on my truck so I can see exactly what else is missing on it. But for right now, I have to say the Hydro, 100% approved. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching another episode of IO Garage. Have a good one. Late.